Sub Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Reviews where today we have ourselves a track by an act named George Lamb titled, uh, this is a translation, uh, men should strengthen themselves. And if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on the screen we're going to listen through it from start to finish. We're going to hear what we think. Now I think this is a live version so that's going to be fun and it's on Billy Billy as well so there'll be a link in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, but yeah, and listen through some start to finish, hear what we think. Let's go. Hopefully it's loud enough for you guys. I mean, I'm sure we'll find out about in post, yeah? I don't think we'll review George Lamb, so I'm su surprised that it's been a while, but... Beautiful symphonic section. Clearly a big name in the industry. They're very dramatic, isn't it, with the strings, the orchestral drums. The tension is high. Oh, I've got to have an account. Okay, that's cool. We can continue. Because I think he was born in 1947, if I'm not mistaken. So the guy, I'm not sure when he recorded this in his life, but uh, apparently he's had a pretty stellar career. He's just got such great charisma to the performance. And a drum solo. Fantastic. It's just great to have that amount of uh, restraint as a singer to allow things to pause and allow the percussion to kind of take a step back or a step forward and fill in the gap there. That shift, that nuance there is great. Men should strengthen themselves. Incredibly passionate. I mean, like, with the strings as well and the brass in the background, the percussive being the focal point alongside the really vigorous, passionate vocal performance there with a little bit of vocal fry occasionally. It really doesn't sleep. There's very little filler in the track. The theme is uh, poignant. 
and um, almost grandiose. Great articulation with the 16th note groups. Fantastic use of woodwinds. Almost seems like a taiko drop that he's hit. And the return. The guitarist just slipped in there out of nowhere, the lead guitarist. I like them as an additional layer in the midfield. Things are quite tight dynamically, but I think we're still handling the layering well. <laughs> that retard down to a feel. Yeah, that would have got out. Excellent. No, that was a great performance. I've got no real complaints about it. And welcome to my conclusion of this review uh, of a track from an act named George Lamb, translated as men should strengthen themselves. What do I think this track is about? I mean, I'd say from like the Taiko drums and a few of the other influences I heard there, it's basically sounds like a movie soundtrack. It's about, you know, really trying to improve ourselves and trying to not allow ourselves to become lazy with our own self-development, you know, to maintain our sense of self-worth and continue to strive for grave greatness. That's what I take not only from the song title, but also the song itself. It's very almost affronting with how ambitious and how, how the, the amount of strength there is within the piece itself. Not least from George Lamb's vocals, I think he's a tremendous singer, shows great vocal technique in his head and chest voice. Some really compelling vocal lines in there when they existed because he wasn't singing the entire time. He had various little verse stanzas there and then he'd take a break and then he would come back in for another round and in between there were lots of little bits of like the taiko drums and other parts of the percussion there. Obviously that wasn't what we had first though, we had sort of strings and brass and other sort of elements there kind of providing a symphonic backing to it that really illustrated the origin and the point of the track early into the piece. It was, um, we didn't sort of mess around with the listeners expectations, we, we got straight to the point, we cut to the chase and I had to show some love for that because with a five minute track like this you really could potentially just like limit the list the, the listener's attention or want to hear more if you don't get to the point straight away and we did that you know um so yeah very strong vocal performance we had various bits of the storytelling across the track i don't understand what the song is about i'm not familiar with the lyrics but i don't feel as if i necessarily needed to know the lyrics to get as much enjoyment as i did out of it so maybe that's a valid sort of alternate perspective to people who are more familiar with the language and George Lamb's work. Clearly, like, very confident on stage, great presence there. But it's also just the theme there with the strings, with the brass, with the orchestral and percussive elements, with the orchestral drums and the, the kit, as well as the bass and guitars that came in later on as well. It was kind of like a weird sort of like classical ballad format, but it had a, a lot going on within it. Very chock-a-block full and we really made sure to fill this the frequency spectrum with as much as we possibly could. 
It was a huge sound to it. It was a spectacle, you know. I think the music sounded strong and we had a general like perceived high energy level to it because we wanted to get people pumped for it. It was it had an old school kind of timey, um, almost a wholesome chord progression to it. And it's familiar in a lot of music that I've heard from this part of the world uh, with some of the more sort of traditional sort of like elements like instruments like i think there were was an urhu there and maybe there was like a chinese flute in there as well that texturally added to a tone and made it feel kind of like warm and caring but it was also again as i mentioned the song kind of wanted to make you rise up and it always resolved to a minor as if the strength is the sadness but it's better than being weak so I suppose with the vigor of the vocal performance, with what we were trying to do with the theme, with the very kind of proud triads there, with minimal kind of like overcomplication of the um, overall sort of like coloration of the, of the arrangement, but also just like the various little flutters of like the woodwinds or the strings, etc. The backing vocals as well, taking over occasionally from George Lamb and they're coming together. It was meant to be, uh, yeah, it was meant to hype you up, basically. That's, that's a, you know, I'm, I don't want to repeat myself, but yeah, no, I don't think there was a note out of place. It's a very complex arrangement. It would have taken a while to figure out what all the different instruments and elements were going to do, but it just goes to show the talent on display here from all the people involved in this track. I have to admire the dedication and attention to detail there, you know. Um, it's one thing to have like a guitar, bass, drums, etc. to be able to put like 20 to 30 instruments together like this and still make it pop is, is stellar. So I think that the motif there with that sense of pride and, and life within it made sense with the vocals and I assume what the song was about. It's just finally the recording, mixing, mastering, studio production. I mean, this is a live take. So I got, I got advice to listen to the live takes. People thought it was better. So that's cool. I mean, I, I think that we, uh, the, the vocals were captured well. It was very sort of raw performance there. You know, they were really belting it into the mic. The backings as well and the sides were centered or, you know, they were captured in the left and right to the stereo field. The strings, the woodwinds, the guitars, bass, the different sort of percussive and drum elements there were captured effortlessly as well with very little, with no issues with the EQing or the filtering or whatever. There wasn't a whole lot of sort of like post-processing done to the effects change of things. It was meant to be like a raw live performance there, like um, like to be a part of it and for it to feel real, if that makes sense. Things were nice and wide in the stereo field in general, so the song sounded like it was surrounding you. There was dynamic range to it, like when things came down for that sort of like drum solo that we had after the first or second verse stanza. That was great for there to be shifts in energy, even though like for the most part it was very loud sounding, although that may be due in part to the compression on the audio, the video file that's been like re-uploaded potentially. But, um, you know, outside of that, we, uh, you know, the, the, it was the things were leveled pretty well in the mix outside of that i i think that the it was nice and level without pumping so the limiting compression was handled uh, really well i think this is a really great introduction to george lamb's at least his live stuff and um hopefully you enjoyed the song if you did please do go show george Lamb some love via the various social medias and i'm sure this will be on all digital strap digital stream platforms it is it is on spotify and stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than never thought of crazy stuff going on in the world and i'll catch you in the next review spider hands out